Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's Record Review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor with both of his dogs trying to sleep behind him. Today I'm going to be reviewing an album by OK Kaya. I have reviewed her previous album, I'll include a link up there, um, but this new album is called Surviving is the New Living. And if you are here with me in the spring slash summer of 2020, you know exactly what this means. This is a quarantine album. This is an album about COVID-19. What I would like to do with this, um, I mean, she's a very talented singer, kind of indie pop. It's a good album. It's very strong. I suggest you listen to it. But even if you don't listen to this music, I'm going to sort of provide an, a, a concept here. I'm going to put out the nine things that make a quarantine album. I could have stretched it out to 10, but that would have been fake. So I'm just going to make it what nine things make a quarantine album. Because I believe that when we look back at this time in music, where there's going to be so many albums that come out from quarantine, you know, we had Charlie XCX last week, we have OK Kaya this week, any time now, any day now, we're going to get the new 21 Pilots, I'm certain of it. There's going to be all this music made, and can we start to discern what are the hallmarks beyond the fact that they came out in spring 2020? So here's what I came up with, and this is all based off of a listening of OK Kaya's new album. This all pertains to this album and to COVID music in general. Here, here's my top 10 list. I mean top nine. I, I already forgot my own device here. You can tell that that one's about to start barking. Just, if, if you're bored of this video, just look at that one, because he's about to bark at any time. He's a menace. Okay, so number one, I would say, is restricted uh, collaboration. And that makes sense, right? You can't work together with artists, or if you do work with artists, it's sending things back and forth to each other, and it doesn't have the same collaborative feel that a lot of music has been having up until this point. The featureings feel slightly stilted and separate, although there are no featureings on this album at all. I would call that restricted collaborations. The credits list her name and some producer. Number two, limited musical elements. So I would say that in general, it's, everything's a lot more pared down. Everything's not quite as lush, not quite as layered as it would be. I think this makes sense given the lack of uh, multiple producers and a more restricted musical zone. I know that Toby is just going to town on that pillow. Can't do anything about it. Number three. Uh, the computer does the heavy lifting, and I really think that's a huge part of this, of our entire lives, right? Our entire lives, computers are doing everything for us. That's how we work, that's how we talk, that's how we communicate. And in music, I would say that computers, even more than ever, are having to be, like, guiding the production philosophy, like the limits of the computer are sort of guiding the limits of the music. And I think that's true now more than ever, in these troubled times. Uh, I would say there's an emphasis on short, non-epic songs, uh, like lots of songs, but shorter. And I think this is because artists get ideas and they execute them, and I think they execute them in a day or two because they're not thinking like, I'm going to take this time, because we don't know how much time we have, right? We don't know if we have a year like this or a month. So I think that artists get this idea like, if I just make a song today, then I'll be done and I can put it out. And I get the sense that we're going to have a whole bunch of great albums that are with short songs that don't have any kind of sweep, any kind of epic feel. Number five, this is kind of logical, rawness. Speed. Hey, Bo, Bo, enough of that. They don't want to see that, trust me. Uh, a certain amount of rawness, okay, which just goes with the fact that for the most part, it's musicians alone in their rooms, either doing everything by themselves or sending it to one or two other people. To make up for the sparseness, there's a prevalence of double or tripled voices. I would say that we hear that a lot on this album and on Charlie XCX's album, and I think that that's gonna be something that people do with trying to compensate for the fact that they have less space to breathe. They have less room. They are trying to just fill the sound a little bit, which all leads into number seven, insular elements, quarantine themes. Uh, insular themes, quarantine themes. I think that even if it's not directly mentioned, and it is on this album a lot, perhaps even too much, um, it will be so implied, it will be so clear that that's what they're singing about, you know? 
Uh, in the post 9-11 time, it was very clear when people were singing about 9-11, even if they didn't talk about the towers coming down, they were singing about fear, they were singing about being scared, they were singing about anger, right? Um, number eight, sparseness, lo isolated, lonely sounds. I would say that's uh, very akin to some of the other things I've been saying, but it's important that the, like you know how like in the, in the 2000s all of a sudden like movies started getting like, like, like the camera started going all over the place? like in Born Identity and all that, and, and the colors got all darker, you know? You know how you can tell a movie from the 70s is from the 70s just by the, 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 the lens that they use and the film that they use and the colors? I think we're gonna look back at the time of quarantine and just say, wow, that, things were really sparse. And then I would say ultimately the themes of, uh, of sadness and helplessness. I think helplessness is the nature of the sadness. It's not just sadness like oh i miss you or i love you but sort of like hey what are we going to do so there you go there is my official list of nine things that make a COVID album would you add anything do you think this is worthwhile or is this just stupid you can say either one i really enjoy uh, responding to negative comments on my videos because i take them seriously uh, okay so that being said let's get to this actual album okay uh, Surviving is the New Living by OK Kaya. I like it more than her previous album. Although the song Psych Ward is better than anything on this album, I'd say consistently all the way through, it's a more enjoyable record. Uh, I initially typed this list in Comic Sans, or Comic Sans, the uh, font, but my kids made me change it because it's a well-known joke that Comic Sans is the worst font in the universe. And that's actually a segue into the first song on OK Kaya's album, Comic Sans. Now I'm gonna read you these lyrics. Since you've, been, uh, since you've been gone, everything has been comic songs. Everything is funny wrong. Since you've been gone, can't go on. If acceptance is key, I'm here waiting for the locksmith. Am I better off, am I better off, am I better off being worse without you? So this is, one second, censored. Toby, Toby. <laughs> Jeez, these two guys, you would have got a real view of that one humping that one's head. <laughs> That's his favorite game. Can't blame him, it's COVID. So these lyrics, you know, they're very witty, they're very funny, they're very smart, but they're also true. And I was talking about them and my wife, Dr. Mrs. Payne, said to me, these are the kinds of lyrics that you like, Sky." I'm like, really? Yeah, because they're earnest, but they sound like they could not be. Like they're right on the line of like so witty that they're not good, that they're abstract, that they're not true, but they're actually true. So in that way, as she said, it makes them brave because you're kind of going out on a limb to make a joke about something seriously. And in order to do that, you have to hope that the joke lands and then you have to hope that the serious part lands. Very, very difficult. The reason I wanna focus on this one song in particular, and I'm gonna talk about this song, the first minute and a half of this song, more than the rest of the album combined, because it is a perfect example of what this album is like and what she is doing that's interesting. I'm going to describe to you the lyrics and then what happens in the music at the same time. Because I just read you the lyrics, and the lyrics are so salient, you might just walk away saying, oh, that was the point of the whole song. But let me just give you an idea of what happens, and then I'll play you 14 seconds of it more than 14 seconds, then you have to start watching ads. And I don't wanna put ads on my video, not for anybody. Okay, so when she says, since you've been gone, it's just a simple bass playing and she's singing in a low register. Everything's been comic songs, it continues that way. Do, 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 do. Everything is funny wrong. But here, the bass stays simple, but her voice goes high and then comes down. She has amazing range and the ability to go all over the place without really, um, without ever over singing. And then she says, can't go on. And this is where things get really interesting. When she says on, a drum machine comes in. That's uh, number, number three. Computer does the heavy lifting. A lot more drum machines now. Uh, the, the drum machine comes in and her voice goes up. And this single syllable of on extends out like basically over an entire octave and throughout an entire measure, measure and a half, two measures. It's really extended out and it's really long. And this just short development over this 
these four lines show the niceness and the quality of this album, where she's able to use her voice extremely well to express, you know, to, to cover a lot of range vocally, but also to express a lot with this sense of like, she's saying something funny, saying something funny, but then can't go on. And as that goes on, that emphasizes the sort of turmoil within her. And then when she sings, if acceptance is key, all of a sudden, number six, double tripled voices starts coming in, okay? But the doubled voices is slightly off. And if I had to add number 10 to this list, I would add something is off. There's often a feeling that rhythmically or harmonically, there are just things that are just a little bit off. And I think that's a reaction to the way that we're feeling right now. Everything just feels a little bit off, a little bit uncertain. So if acceptance is key, I'm here waiting for the locksmith. And then here on locksmith, the music hits an unexpected note. I mean, her voice hits a kind of unexpected note, like sort of like a minor note that you don't expect. And then the bass goes in the wrong direction as well. And everything just gets more and more unsettling as we go along. Am I better off, she says, as the doubled voice on off goes off. And a kind of drone comes in, like a drone horn sound, kind of like a Sergeant Pepper's era Beatles, like Meh. sound goes on, it's like a broken robot or a siren or something. And then guitar comes in to layer it further. Am I better off? Am I better off? Am I better off? And the music just starts going wild. The drone goes, am I better off? Worse without you. And then comes an instrumental break with a kind of keyboard that goes and descends. And all this happened in a minute and 30 seconds. She's able to convey the funny, true feeling that she has. And she asked this great question, am I better off being worse off without you? That is a great lyric. Okay, so I'm just gonna play you 14 seconds of this so you can hear it. I think I picked it right after she says, everything's funny wrong. Everything's funny wrong Since you've been gone Okay, so that gives you an idea of what her voice sounds like, what the production is like, and really what the whole album is like. So I got things falling all over the place. I have notes, not scripts, but my notes, I don't keep them very secure, so they always fall off the music stand I record on. Uh, the next track, um, actually I will say one more thing about that song. The way that she sings, am I better off than being worse? Just, this is just something I noticed. This, that's all this channel is, Sky. It's just things I notice. The, 12 minutes in, let me tell you something that I noticed as opposed to, as opposed to what Bo noticed. Um, the way that she sings worse has an amazing clarity. It's an amazingly satisfying pronunciation of the word worse. So just have a listen. Am I crazy? Okay. Uh, next track, Baked Bean. Um, it's about like gossip, about spilling the beans, but then the, the music is a little bit gospel-like. It's interesting and it's in that same thing of like, very witty music, maybe too witty. Squish is a track about, I think it has a, it's like a, sort of a muted guitar sound. Sort of a love track, there's multiple love tracks on here. The most obscure lyric, I'm just a conehead looking for your bonehead. Speaking of obscure lyrics, the next track is called Das Obst, which is in German. Now she's Norwegian and grew up in, I think, New Jersey, if I remember the last video properly. Um, but this is a really nice track. It has kind of like a trance feeling at times, kind of like Phil Collins style drum beat and picked guitars, a very nice ethereal song. I like songs that are not in English. This is one of two on the album, they're not in English. It's a very quality song. I don't know what it's about. Next we have a track called DJ. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this one. This is a whole song where she's asking, can someone please tell me how to be a DJ? And she wants to be a DJ because she wants to be able to go to parties but not talk to people. Like she wants to be able to socialize without socializing. And it's funny because it's a, like a one minute song. And my daughter heard this and she goes, Dad, this is the same thing as that thing you reviewed last week. I was like, what is? This song, remember the guy who sang about ants and about killing all the politicians? I was like, what do you mean? Oh, oh yeah, it is kind of like the magnetic fields. Remember how I said one of the things is these short, non-epic songs? This is a perfect example. What I imagine is that she had an idea for a song. She's like, it's a minute long. I don't care. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna put it out there. And then that'll be what I did on April 27th. April 27th, I made the song and here you go. 
and it's a funny short song and it's a lot like Magnetic Fields because it's based on a joke, it's very witty, but it's ultimately talking about the desire to be, or the sadness of being alienated and isolated in public situations. The next track is Knag, which I assume is Norwegian. Nice kind of slow arpeggiated chords on a keyboard, very weird voices going on in the background, but a great atmosphere. Again, that slightly off feeling on all COVID music, I would say. Just slightly, slightly off. I think I could, I could wrap that in with number eight, the sparseness, isolated sounding. Everything's a little bit off. The next track is Bill Withers, which is, I, <clears throat> I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. This is like a, a sex song about like frequencies and low voices and not needing vibrators because you're, you're getting low, like a low voice, nice rhythms on here, but Bill Withers just died. So I thought this would be about Bill Withers, but it is, I don't know. I, I could maybe also add too, Everyone's Going Crazy, number 10. Number 10 could be Everyone's Going Crazy. Uh, the next track, Palm Psalm, this is where everything gets very overtly about the quarantine. Uh, when she says Palm Psalm, she's talking all about like Purell. Purell purity. She talks about the last time she took something from a stranger. It's all about like washing her hands and tying it in with Jesus and tying it in with the purity of praying and the palms and the washing the hands. At times her voice reminds me of Laurie Anderson, you know, the, the 80s mm, experimental art musician who later married Lou Reed. Um, just where she sort of like speaks in a way that's sort of knowing and smart it's also maybe a little bit annoying if you don't like it. Next track, Kiss the Sky, another very, very overtly quarantined song. Not a bad title. Uh, it talks about canceling plans, but then appears to be a song about the eroticism of being alone and being forced to be with yourself and with your own body, which is pretty nice. And everything builds very nicely, especially with the bass. Lots of cool off notes all over the place just to make sure you're never quite comfortable. I mean, like Bill Withers and this, like you're just always a little bit uncomfortable. Next track is another one of the sort of witty tracks, Snacks, Revenge is a Dish That is Best Not to Eat. Uh, I think she says it's tepid ranch without celery, quite funny. Uh, but it's a, a good example of the rawness I was talking about. Just guitar and singing. It's just really, really raw. It's a single idea. It's well executed, it's funny, it's sad, and it's raw. Finally, it ends with Fifth Harm, and this is Maybe if I added another number 10 here, that brings us up to my 13th number 10, um, is themes of sleeplessness. Because she seems to be listing things that help her sleep, like chamomile tea and CBD. Um, but she harmonizes with herself again in an unsettling way, a low voice and a high voice, and just giving to this whole sense of surviving is the new living. Just, oof. Very, very, very of the moment. The great question is, of course, how will these COVID albums age? Will they age well? Will we want to listen to these in 10 years? Like, will they be great documents that remind, you know, like listening to All Along the Watchtower reminds you what the 60s was like? Or is it just going to be like, you know, a song, you know, Y2K is coming. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to tell. I guess we'll have to wait for history to tell us. So there you go. There's my thoughts on what makes a COVID album and what makes this OK Kai album a good COVID album. The dogs didn't bark. It's amazing. Let's see if I can get them to, to say goodbye. Bobo. Bobo. See, that's Toby. Whenever I say Bo's name, Toby goes up. Bo. Bobo. Come on, Bo. Bo. Yeah. All right. For Bo and Toby and for Kaya and for all of you alone at home, there's the camera.